In this video, we're going to set up our Twitch account and chat moderator bot before we stream. Let's get right into it. The first thing we need to do is go through our settings for our Twitch account. Let's log into Twitch and click our name at the top, then select settings. In the first tab, we can change how our name appears in Twitch chat, update our email, add an avatar or profile picture, and write a bio to give our viewers a bit more of information about us. I'll quickly add in a logo and write in a generic bio. Let's hit save changes and move on to the Turbo tab. Turbo is a subscription-based membership that provides benefits such as ad-free viewing, custom emotes, and even a cool chat badge in Twitch. If you're like me and watch a lot of Twitch on mobile devices, you may want to consider a subscription of this. Moving on to the Channels and Videos tab, we'll notice where we can upload a video player banner or offline image. You'll want to choose an image with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and something that represents your stream. Nerd or Die is actually working on an image creator similar to our panel and overlay maker, so make sure to subscribe to see when that launches. It will basically allow you to create your own without something like Photoshop or any image editor. Anyways, if you have a file, go ahead and upload it here now. The mature content checkbox is for those that plan on streaming content that may be inappropriate for younger audiences. Checking this box does not exclude you from the terms of service. The next option, Archive Broadcasts, will automatically save your stream on the Twitch servers. This will allow you to create highlighted clips as well as export videos to YouTube if enabled. Let's checkmark this option. The Stream Delay option is a feature that will help reduce delay between what's happening live to what your viewers are seeing. This option may cause buffering for viewers with poor connections. Let's go ahead and enable this, but if you have a lot of viewers in your chat complaining about buffering issues, it may be worthwhile to disable this and see if that helps. Authorized Broadcasters allows other people to stream to your channel. You can use this box to invite and authorize them. Let's move on to our chat options. If you're not planning on using a chatbot, which I'll show you how to set up shortly, then you may want to consider enabling block hyperlinks. This will purge any chat messages that contain links. There's a lot of spam bots out there, as well as people that will link harmful sites. We can leave this disabled since we're setting up Nightbot in just a moment. Twitch will automatically filter globally banned words, but if you'd like to add some words that aren't included on their list, you can do so here. You can also opt out of filtering globally banned words with this next option. The last section in the set of options will show us any users that have been banned from your channel. Let's save changes and move on to security and privacy. Here you can change your password as well as set up two-factor authentication. If you're concerned about your channel's security, two-factor authentication will definitely help put your mind at ease. Here, you can also disable exporting to YouTube if you want to protect your channel's content. The remaining options will offer privacy when it comes to messages from strangers. This basically means any users that you don't follow. After we save changes, we can check out the notifications tab. Most of these options are meant for using Twitch as a viewer, but the ones important to us as new broadcasters are under email me when. We can set alerts when we receive a private message, gain new followers, and when a video can be created, which means we can make a highlight or export it to YouTube. We can also receive an email when someone makes us an editor of their channel, meaning we can create highlights and YouTube exports for other channels. Read through the rest of the options and set up them as needed, and then let's hit save changes. The Connections tab offers links with Blizzard and Steam. I personally haven't found these connections too useful though. You can also set up YouTube integrations so that you can export VODs or videos on demand to your YouTube channel. With Facebook, you can enable one-click login through your Facebook account, and with Twitter connection, you can set up automatic tweets when you go live, as well as send tweets through the new channel feed which I'll show you shortly. The other connections represents any apps that we have connected to our Twitch account. If you ever decide to, you can disable them here. The last tab for subscriptions will cover any channels that you're sub to. Let's not worry about that and actually move on to our Twitch dashboard. The Twitch dashboard is where we can update our stream title as well as set up what game we're playing. Titles will be important to let viewers know what we're up to and the game category will help us be found in game directories. 
I'll actually make a quick change to mind and then hit update. We don't need to worry about the remaining tabs, but if you're interested, make sure to check them out. Let's go ahead and click the drop down at the top and go to our profile. Our profile is where viewers will go to watch our past broadcasts, highlights, and be able to see who we follow as well as who follows us. We can add a profile bio here as well. At the top, you'll notice the ability to add a profile banner, which will be any image we feel represents our stream. You can upload pretty much any image, but the recommended size is 900 by 480. As I mentioned before, Nerd or Die will have an offline image creator in the near future, and will also have the capability of making an image for this type of file as well. Anyways, once we're done here, let's go ahead and move on to the final page we need to set up on Twitch, our channels page. You can get here by using the drop down and clicking channel, or just entering your stream channel URL. In my case, this is twitch.tv slash nerd or die. If you have a past broadcast already, it will appear at the top. We will also notice the ability to update our broadcast title and game on this page as well. Our offline image will load in this section where our video feed will be when we're not live. Let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at the information below where our video feed will show. The first thing I wanna point out is our panels. Panels are basically sections that will allow us to display different information about our stream. You can see that I already have some panels added in for my channel, but let me show you how to add in your own. First, if you need some images to use for this section, you can use our panel maker on nerderdie.com to customize each section. The link will be in the description below. Panels typically include information about the streamer, such as the schedule they'll be live, chat commands, social media, and donation or tip information. Of course, you can put whatever you like in this section. Remember that donation page we talked about in the previous video? Let's go ahead and set that up. First, let's turn on edit panels by clicking the switch. To add a new panel, click on the big plus. You can enter a title for your panel here, which will appear in plain text, but the image that we created will actually act as our header, so we don't need to add one. Let's click add image and upload one of the new panel images we just downloaded. Once it's uploaded, we can drag around these boxes to crop this image if needed. Images here can be 320 pixels width by 320 pixels in height. Let's go ahead and hit done. Now let's paste the URL of the page we'd like to link in the next section. Finally, you can add a description or text to include in each panel. So I'll put thanks for watching and deciding to support my stream. To further customize our panels, we can use Markdown, which is a simple formatting language to make our panels look a bit nicer and add things like links to this area. Let's click the Markdown link. If we scroll down a bit, we can see formatting options that are available. The left column shows what we type in our description box, and then the right side displays how viewers will see this information. So let me add a link to my description. To make this easy, I'll just copy the format shown in the example. I'll go back to my panel description box, hit enter to skip down a few spaces, and paste in the text I just copied. I can change the word inside the brackets to what I'd want it to say. So I'll change it to click here to donate. Next, in parentheses, we'll put the link that we want this text to link to. I'll paste in my donation page link. When you're done with your design and information, hit submit to save your panel. You'll also be able to remove a panel here if needed. You want to take some time and repeat this process as needed and make sure that your viewers have all the information that you'd like to share. If you ever need to change or rearrange your panels, you can do so here and to rearrange them, you just simply click and drag them into the position that you'd like. When we're all done, let's turn the switch off. Sometimes you may need to reload your channel's page to see the changes that you made. The final thing on this page we can do is set up our channel feed. You can click this switch to turn on the feed. It's a great way to make Twitter-like updates to your channel's page. It's very useful to let viewers know anything new that's going on in your channel or to give them a quick update about any information that you may wanna share. If your account is linked to Twitter, you can also share your update to Twitter here by ticking this box. Clicking the gear for any updates will allow you to delete, share, or report any post. The last thing I'd like to show you before we go live is how to set up a chatbot to moderate our chat messages. 
There's a lot of different chatbots out there, but let's go ahead and set up Nightbot, one of the most popular ones. Head to nightbot.tv and log in. Let's log in with our Twitch account, and the first thing you'll want to do is have the bot join your chat channel. We can do this by hitting join channel at the top. We'll get a message about modding Nightbot, which will give it the ability to timeout users, purge links, and more. So I'll quickly hop over to my channel's chat and type slash mod Nightbot. If we ever decide to stop using Nightbot, we can use slash unmod Nightbot and go back into the Nightbot webpage and hit part channel. Nightbot offers a lot to your chat channel and we'll cover different features in future videos, but let's set up some spam protection. Click the link on the left to go to these options. Here, we'll just see different filters we can enable and disable. These options are all pretty straightforward, so just decide which ones works best for your channel. Hit enable to turn on any of these filters. For example, if we want Nightbot to time out anyone that posts a link, we can simply just enable it here. Each filter has its own set of different options, so let's take a look at the link options. For links, we can set a whitelist of links or links from certain domains that we'd like to allow. Let's say that you want to allow users to post imager pictures and YouTube links, but no other links. We can type in imager.com on one line, hit enter, and type youtube.com on the next. Now, any links from YouTube and imager will be allowed in our chat, but all others will be purged. We can also set how long to timeout users if they post links. Nightbot will always timeout chatters for five seconds for their first offense, and then the number here is how long chatters will be timed out for a second offense. You can use this dropdown to choose an exemption level, which is useful if you want to try to allow different types of viewers, such as moderators, to do different types of things in chat. The silent option will tell the bot to not post any responses in your chat if they take actions on chatters. The custom message is what Nightbot will say in chat if it takes actions on a user. I'll go ahead and hit submit when I'm done with my changes. As you can see, chatbots can be extremely useful for new streamers as it will control what type of environment your chat has without needing to monitor and moderate it yourself. Worrying about users spamming too many emotes or links is something that we just want out of our minds when we first start streaming. Most bots can do a lot more than just moderate chat and I highly recommend taking the time and setting up your chatbot properly. All right, and with that, we're ready to stream. And in the next video, we'll talk about going live on Twitch. And I'll also share some tips I have to help you improve your stream as well. If you have any questions about this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you really like the video, subscribe to Nerd or Die for more great streaming and video game content. Thanks for watching.